Hey, Rob Norton here. We're getting back into another what if. Um, I believe I've only done two other what ifs before. Sorry, it's funny. I'm, I'm getting to a point. I've only been doing videos on YouTube for like a month and a half as of this recording. And I've got something like 70 videos up. And so I'm actually getting to a point where I, I can't remember everything I've done clearly off the top of my head. Uh, but the first one I ever did was what if um, X-Men Lost Inferno and... Um, that was great because that was the issue where they had Wolverine eat a human baby. And I am not joking. That is no exaggeration. Go check out that video. And then we did, what if Wolverine was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is Rob Liefeld's best work. And I say that with a little bit of a, a hesitation because the inker, Scott Williams, clearly carried so much of the weight of the artwork in that book. It's obviously a Liefeld art book but the inker scott williams i think he he pulled his, a huge amount of the weight on that book but it looks good so this is my third one what if wolverine battled conan the barbarian we were my brother and i when i say we uh my older brother and i we were the collecting books back in the day and so we kind of shared them and all this stuff and we were into the what ifs and this one I'm not trying to speak for my brother, but I believe it, for him, it was the same as me. We were aware of Conan, but we didn't know who or what he was. I knew the Schwarzenegger movies, and I think that first Schwarzenegger movie is pretty goddamn good. But I've never read any of the comics, so I don't have much to say or know about the character at that time. But to have Conan fighting Wolverine? All right. Like, I redrew this cover once. It's one of my first pieces of artwork, just trace, not tracing it, but re reproducing this image. I, it's not the greatest one. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's all right. But how the hell do you get Wolverine and Conan the Barbarian together? Well, what if comics, they have a way of putting shit together really well. So this is August of 1990, and um, it's starting out with the premise of the Phoenix Saga, where the X-Men had Jean Grey and she had her powers and they're running into the Shi'ar and Lilandra and ended up in a big fight, you know, the way the whole The Phoenix Saga played out, um, which I'm going to be doing. We're about to start uh, going through the classic X-Men books with The Phoenix Saga. But um, I had not read that at this point, or I might have been right in the middle of it. It's kind of hard to say. I'd actually need to look at the dates on those books as I was reading them. But... There is the scene where they're showing how it basically played out. Jean Grey lost control of her powers again. She was, the phoenix was manifesting itself. Wolverine, you know, he's there and he decides to, he, he picks up Colossus and throws him at her because they're on the moon. So gravity's light so he can do it. So he chucks him and Colossus decks her just enough to bring her back to her senses. And in coming to her senses, she uses her own powers to have this alien laser devices off to the side, shoot her and kill her and end the threat of the Phoenix. That's a quick summation of how the Phoenix saga ended. Very sad. But as the watcher, you know, giant skull guy here says, I have often pondered the events that may have happened, had may have transpired if I had strictly followed the law of my brethren. So join me now as I, as I witness the consequences had I simply abandoned Wolverine to one of the realms he journeyed through in my home, to an age undreamed of by man. So in the story, Wolverine, he's on the moon and he ended up in, inside the Watcher's little place that he's at here. And the Watcher kind of like tumbled Wolverine through different time eras just to teach him a lesson, but popped him out and let him go. And he affected how the Phoenix story ended. But the Watcher's saying, what if I just dropped him off into one of these eras? Well, what era could it possibly be? What if Wolverine had lived during the age of Conan the Barbarian? Um, this artist, the entire creative team, I have no idea who any of these guys are. Glenn Hurdling is the writer. Never heard of him. Gary Qu Quap is oh man, I K W A P I S Z. I, I can't, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I don't want to butcher it like I already did. But there's Wolverine, you know, going from the Phoenix story. That's not a bad pose for whoever this artist is. Giant lizard monsters trying to attack some girl. So Wolverine's awesome. He's going to jump in there and attack it. He gets pushed off. And so he jumps up on Tonic, slams his claws down, and kills it. And um, 
in a world where you've been reading comics with Silvestri and Jim Lee drawing Wolverine, that, I mean, I guess his mask is supposed to be messed up, but it looks really, really kind of weak. I thought the artwork on this started out strong and then it gets really weak into the middle of it, but I think it ended strong. We'll see if that still kind of works. But Wolverine's trying to figure out where the hell he is, what's going on. I don't know where I'm at. So he kind of travels into the city. He's already run into Conan. Now, again, I can't speak too much on the character. I've never read the original stories or the original comics. I don't know anything about him except the basic premise of the character. So this is basically my introduction to him in a comic. Um, big, awesome warrior. Whatever. So Wolverine, you know, creeps into the city. He runs into like some drunken loser and he ba Wolverine basically knocks him out to take his outfit. But Red Sonia in the world's sexiest and most impractical and stupid costume for an era shows up and yeah, she, I guess she basically witnessed him knock out this guy, steal his clothes and his money. He didn't kill anybody, but Red Sonia, she's a good guy, right? She sees Wolverine pulling some basically scummy shit. So she's like, we're going to fight. So she dives at him. They fight. This is a really silly looking picture of Wolverine. But, you know, she's chopping at him. He pops out his claws, blocks her sword, sends her flying. Another weird, I mean, it tells the story just fine, but it's a really weird drawing. Not my favorite, but again, because I was reading Jim Lee and Sylvester comics with this character, you got kind of like a an expectation for what the awesome version of the character is. So Wolverine dives at her. She's on the ground. She lost her sword. She pulls a knife out. And he deflects it away, and he does this thing, I thought it was kind of cool, where he's got two claws out, but not hit, not the third one. You know, so each claw's on either side of her head, and he's like, give it up, stop, I'm done. Don't make me, you know, I beat you, you're down. And in kind of a, it's kind of sleazy, you know, it, it's, I don't, I don't know anything about the character, I know even less about Red Sonya beyond her existence. And beyond the idea that she's a female Conan, which is not who she is, but basically. But she's basically saying, like, you, you're not going to kill me? Then you have heard of my vow never to love a man lest he best me in battle. Take me then, but don't expect me to enjoy it. So she's basically, like, saying, you beat me so you get to fuck me. And you know Wolverine loves hot redheads, but uh, he, no, he's not going to do that shit. He's like, she offered herself to me like some sort of prize. And he's like, sorry, darling, that ain't my style. So now she's like intrigued. Like, well, she's like, I'm hot. I'm badass. I'm awesome. And I, get, I threw myself at to someone for the first time ever. And he said, no, man, fuck this little short, little hairy asshole. But she's intrigued. Um... So they end up in a bar and now he's charming her. They're talking and they can't, well, I mean, it, it, it says that they're trying to talk, but they can't speak the same language. So she's saying her name, Sonia. So he's trying to say it. So like, Sonia, that's pretty Logan. And she says, Conan, no, no, Lo but she actually sees Conan in the background. So they don't speak the same language, which I think is a great touch because suddenly everyone in comics, movies, TV, everyone speaks English, but they're actually showing how they can't speak the same language. So, you know, Sonya's interested in Conan, so she goes to follow him, see him, and Wolverine's going to tag along because why not? Sorry, tangent. Holy fuck. X-Men for Nintendo? You bet your fucking ass I wanted this game, and you bet your fucking ass that I got it. And you bet your fucking ass it's the worst game you've ever played in your life. What a horrible waste of money, time, and effort, and frustration. Man, fuck that game. Fuck it. Fuck it. Sorry. Um, Conan's looking at, I don't know, evil Conan shit. Sonya's showing up. Um, of course, Wolverine Logan, he doesn't understand what he's looking at. He sees Conan and bunch of angry warrior alpha males are going to look at each other. You know there's going to be a fight here somewhere, right? With some evil villain guy. Um, throws some gas and knocks out Sonya. That pisses off Wolverine really bad. So he jumps at Conan, claws out, let there be a fight. I appreciate the fact that they made Conan really tall and big and Wolverine really short and stumpy, like he's supposed to be. Um, so Wolverine 
shreds Conan's sword. So that kind of pisses Conan off. But of course, you know, adamantium claws that can cut through anything. That would happen. So um, Conan jumps up. He's pissed off. And he grabs this other sword this bad guy had. And it's some magical sword that Wolverine's claws can't cut. He's like, ah, now we stand on equal ground. So now let's battle. Bonk's adventure. Very exciting. <laughs> God, they keep having Wolverine jumping in the air like a little frog or something like that. But they're going at it pretty hardcore. And uh, you know these two guys are going to fucking kill each other. They're not going to like hammer it out for a minute and then, oh wait, we respect each other, right? They're going to kill each other. And maybe when one of them's dead, then their respect will come. So Wolverine slashes at him really good. But then Conan, and he comes down really hard with this magical sword and... Like, you obviously can't kill Wolverine, but you could cut his throat. And for this artist who does some stuff that doesn't look very good, on occasion, he'll hit a really visceral image that tells the emotional story really well. And I think that is that is it right there. Angry, psychotic face chopping down. He, he wins the battle, basically. Um, let's see. For the longest, for long moments after the beast, the beast's eerie death howl, Conan, so yeah, he's Wolverine does like a animalistic howl before he drops dead. Um, by every standard, the being at his feet should be decapitated. But, you know, the indestructible sword is disjointed and the demon's neck erupts blood from its torn jugular. The wild man's carcass convulses in a pool of crimson. Then all is still. So that's really interesting. Conan's not stupid. He's fought a billion battles. He knows with the... The, the hit that he gave this guy should have chopped his head right off, but it didn't, and it broke the sword. And Wolverine literally is spurting blood, drops to the ground, convulsing, and goes still. So he should be dead. That's pretty awesome. Good angle. You know, this down angle in perspective, the twisting of that body, that shit is not easy to draw. So, again, for all the places where I kind of mentioned this artist does some not great stuff, he can really nail it in other parts. So Conan takes off. I guess he grabs Sonya and the bad guy. You know Wolverine's not dead. He's just out for a minute because he's mutant healing factor. He's going to get him back up on his feet. But the thing with Wolverine, one of my favorite kind of elements to him is when he gets really injured like this, he's angry and he's pissed. He goes into his like blood rage where he's just like angry and mindless and just a killing machine. See the text. The human brain can survive, survive without oxygen for no more than six minutes, but Wolverine is no mere human. He possesses a mutant healing factor which can heal almost any wound. The rate at which it works depends upon the severity of the injury. Although his jugular is almost completely healed, the damage to his brain is not. For what rises to his feet bears little resemblance to a human at all. That's really cool. That's an interesting way of saying, like, He's healing, but he's kind of lost his mind. Lack of oxygen has brought to fore Wolverine's suppressed animal nature. His savage berserker rage. He's sniffing at the ground and leaps out into the night. He's going to go find some Conan. He's going to fuck him up. And so Conan is at some big evil place. And I'm trying. I, I didn't reread this. For whatever reason, he's... He has to work with these guys for some reason. They've got Sonya in her ridiculously sexy and practical bullshit outfit. Sets her down. I mean, this artist does. She's pretty attractive. Wolverine's shown up and he sees innocent hot girl, hot redhead girl. And you know, Wolverine's all about that shit. So he comes a charging and Conan's like, oh shit, that demon guy's alive. And this guy's like, they got to perform some rituals. So he's like, Conan, protect me before he screws up everything. So they dive into each other, throw each other around. Wolverine's pissed as hell, slicing at him. This is a great shot where Conan slices a big wide swath and Wolverine blocks it with his claws. That, that works really well. And even cooler, Wolverine chops his hand off. Boom. You know, Conan has lost his hand. While this is going on, Magician Guy is like, calling to the magical winds to find out who in the fuck is this weird little animalistic guy with claws. And he sees that he's he's from an entirely different universe. He's time displaced. His name is Wolverine, and that kind of catches his attention for a minute. So the magician guy knows that he's from some other place. He's not supposed to be here. So he's like, 
And so he's like, he does a translation spell so they can understand each other's language. So now Wolverine, they all speak English, like can understand each other. He says, look, this is where you're supposed to be. Jump into the pool and this will send you back to your own time. Look, there's a hot redhead there. You're into her, right? And he's like, Gene, you know, his little animalistic side. He wants to get it. He's like, yes, your friends need you. And he's like, I, I should go. I should go. So while Wolverine's trying to ponder what, if he should do this because his mind hasn't come back yet. This was cool because Conan, he had his hand cut off. So he goes to this boiling pot of whatever, this hot boiling lava or something. Um, the uh, cauterizes Kata, his wounds. I'm just trying to figure out if it's just fire. Anyway, he sticks his stumpy little wrist inside there to cauterize the wound. And so he's pissed off. He grabs Red Sonia and takes off with her. Giant demon guy shows up. Jagtanoga, demon of the lost land, come thou and prevent him. So that's pretty awesome. Big demon monster that bad guy has conjured. So one-handed Conan has to face him. So grabs a sword, charges into it, because Conan's awesome. He ain't gonna, no one's gonna defeat him. Big battle, in, you know, is going on. Wolverine's still trying to come to his senses. And um, let's see. Both man and animal identify with the bird of power. So, you know, he still hasn't kind of come to his senses. So Wolverine basically jumps in there and interferes with the, you know, the big demon monsters flinging Conan in the air. And when Wolverine interferes, the demon releases him. And if you remember, because I know you do, just back here, this guy is saying, jump into the pool. It'll send you magically back to where you're supposed to be coming from. Oh, shit. Conan is diving or he's falling towards that pool. He's like, no, no, save yourself, you black-maned fool. And he falls into the water, splash, and the portal closes. And animalistic Wolverine's like, Gene, it's gone. Die. Chops his head right off. Oh, shit, that is done. So he grabs Sonya. Everything's falling apart, rumbling, falling to pieces. Eventually, Wolverine kind of comes back to his senses completely. Um, she's like, Logan, are you? And he's like, don't worry about me, darling. My rage is spent and my wounds are healing. But thanks for caring. Of course, now they're making out because, of course, it's, it's story's over. 29 pages. We've got to wrap it up. They're like, what about Conan? And the guy says, the legend of Conan the Barbarian has reached its end, at least in this age, following his footsteps. In his footsteps. What plans have you for you and your paramour? I hear that Alconia is ripe with activity for spirited warriors. So it basically says that these two stay together and it makes sense like warriors badasses respectable so they go off and now in the age of conan these two just go off and have adventures there could be an interesting series of stories told there what an interesting way to end the comic like wolverine ends up in a place he can't get back to where he's come from but this is kind of a place where wolverine could live happily where he's just a warrior fighting forever that's good times so it ends not exactly sad, but not exactly happy. You know, Wolverine's all right. He ends up with a hot redhead. Like, he's always into that shit. But, epilogue. As happened with Wolverine in the story, he gets ejected out of the Watcher's little thing here. But this time, it's not Wolverine. It's Conan. He shows up. There's a scroll there. And he slays the shit out of it. Some of these the Kree aliens, they come after him. He kills them all because Conan is awesome. But Conan looks, now this is the, the peak of the uh, the Phoenix story, like we were talking about over here when Jean Grey's powers are getting away from her and Wolverine popped out of the place there through Colossus, decked her, brought her back to her senses so Jean Grey could kill herself and end the threat of the Dark Phoenix, which could end the universe. That's how the X-Men solved that problem. But stupid Conan doesn't know no goddamn thing what's going on. All he sees is a bunch of like weirdly clad warriors all encircling a hot redhead kind of like Sonya and he's all about it Sonya so he throws a rock at Cyclops head knocks his ass out and basically the dark phoenix takes over and sets the universe aflame and destroys everything and the last thing is Conan saying 
Krom, which is his god that he says, he's like, say, holy god, like, he just fucked up everything, you know, what a crazy way to end it, it ended kind of happy for Wolverine and ended like terrible for the rest of them, so that's the end of that um, story, I thought it was pretty fun, again, I'm, as the artist, me now and young me starting to get into drawing, Artistically, it wasn't quite up to the same levels as some of the stuff I thought was really good, but there's some points where this artist really nailed it really well. It looks good, and he pulls off the emotional beats really well, and um, it's really good. One of these funny things back here, they always do these little humorous ones. What if Wolverine really met Conan the Barbarian? He's just they're like at a bar having a little rage moment. He's Conan's like... Then sometimes I'm in a fight, I'll suddenly be um, overcome with this berserker rage and I'll start hacking and slashing at anything in sight. Friend or foe, it doesn't matter because at that moment all I see is red. Slams his cup down, Wolverine takes a tug and belches and he's like, yeah, I know what you mean. Simple little stupid throwaway gag, but that shit made me laugh all the time. I thought it was really funny. So that's just the end of that book. Not the, not the best what if, whatever, but a good one. And as has the case so far, um, Wolverine's a big focus in all the what ifs that we've done. Um, there's more that we'll be looking at where I promise Wolverine will not be the focus. There's some really good ones coming up. But um, that was a fun one. And um, I wanted to look at it. Another one of my favorite books from a thousand years ago when I was just a young kid and comics were new and this shit was all exciting and adventurous and good times. So that's all I've got for this one. So thanks for watching and see you next time.